It's been a long week waiting for the resolution of this cliffhanger. Oh. Stop trying to win this. Stop trying to talk and get out of there. I'm sure Deku will react to this in a cool and collected fashion. Todoroki holding both of them up for dear life. Spilling so much blood for no reason. No reason. No reason. <laughs> yeah, damn, that's they're just digging their hole deeper. If you use one for all in anger, the power will react to that feeling. What's important? Is keeping tabs on your heart. Yeah, I was waiting for them to say something like that. I've been feeling this was a big danger for Deck with this. Oh my god, look at his. Went like total demon mode. Damn! Um. Is this. Are we controlling our anger? <laughs> whatever. I mean, whatever. Just do it. Come to me. One for all. Hit him, Deck. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going inside. We're going way back. I love how only his abs are featured. If I hadn't lent you my power, you would be nothing but ash right now. Dead from Endeavor's blast or the resulting fall. It almost seems like All For One's doing them a favor right now by causing this rift with Shigaraki. They are not. Let us take care of this for you. Oh damn, the legends of the past. The ones within us. We're going into an internal battle. This should be interesting. Oh yeah, this guy. <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> Given everything happening with Deku and Shigaraki. I'm pretty sure that in an earlier episode of this season, I gave my prediction about themes of the show and where it's going, and that we've kind of separated from the All Might model where it's just this one figurehead, and everyone kind of gives their responsibility and agency to that figure. Whereas in the future, it will be more of like a, a web of people who are really strong and independent and fully realized as people and heroes themselves. And that what that suggests to me is that if that is where the show is going, the villains are probably going to be contrasted to that in some key way. And at the time, I think I theorized that that was going to come from the League of Villains, but it seems more likely now that that rift is going to come between Shigaraki and all, all for one. No matter how powerful either of them are, they're not going to be a society that consists of each individual person having realized their full potential and strength in their own way. There's no amount of individual power they can do that. And perhaps if it is the case that one person can consolidate that much power and have that much reign, that there's some kind of tacit agreement among other people to give them that power or defer responsibility away from themselves, which interestingly is not dissimilar from the All Might model and very directly what led to this whole crisis. Just practically speaking from this episode alone, Shigaraki and All for One are already kind of tripping all over each other. And that might translate into the spirit world where Deku actually has the collaboration of all the people who came before him in his lineage, whereas it's just all for one, kind of vying for full power. We need to focus on saving people from that giant. Evacuations are almost done here, but countless What's others work, are in bird? danger. With the calms down, we can't update those who went after Shigaraki. These are the most low-res heroes. I'll lend you support. No kid, you'll be caught up in Shigaraki's decay. Dang, he's fast. He is fast, but he's also on the ground. You know, please don't. But I have three classmates who may be in danger. Two of them are treasured friends who set me on the right path. <laughs> who, at that time, were trying to get him to follow orders or not going out on his own. But this is a more level-headed, more realized Ida. things better, but have we? It's tough. It's a deep philosophical question to pose while sprinting at full speed. It's said when a person receives an organ transplant, their personality can change. Okay, Parasite Eve. Just as memories and personality can reside inside transplanted viscera, quirk factors contain a piece of the person who wields them, even after they've passed on to new users. Though I admit I'm not certain if this is a blessing or a curse. It's going to be used as a curse against them. It's a blessing for Decker right now. Rest assured, Grandmother. I hate you like I hate everyone else. This world... It's falling apart! Good, Tomura. Your hatred is breaking through! And they're united again. I'm afraid your hatred isn't strong enough, though. Oh, look who it is. What in the hell is this? It is abject power, Tomura. 
If we simply join forces and combine our might, we'll have the strength to steal it. Yeah, I really feel like this will be a very important scene in the full perspective of the show. One thing I've noticed a lot, the more I think about it in media, that I think typically works really well is when you have two really great opposing characters, let's say protagonist, antagonist, who are both notable in what they stand for. But while they are fully interesting and complex characters themselves, like Deku and Shigaraki, they actually are avatars for a much longer struggle that probably is going to be something that is a universal struggle that we all acknowledge on some level. This is, in essence, an ancient battle. It's a long standing battle. It didn't start with Deku and Shigaraki. Deku is just such a great, realized, amazing vision or vision in the making of what will be a triumphant force. One of the things I really like about this encounter is that I feel like they're representing a lot of things simultaneously. There's a lot going on with the characters and with these opposing sides. Deku in many ways encompasses this idea of just sheer will, you know, and accompanied with that is pure responsibility for which he's not the first in line. All for One's brother was an early iteration of that. There's the cruelty of nature and scarcity and death that create some of the, the most selfish impulses in, in humans. And on the other side, there's people who refuse to let that be their defining characteristic and try to rise above it and fight the decay of life by trying to lift the world on their shoulders. And it's so cool to see them be united in that struggle when each of them independently made that journey. Deku right now is leaning on the vestiges of the past, but he's eventually going to be able to stand on that legacy and become even greater than all of his predecessors, at least in a, in a key way for this moment in time. Whereas all for one's cruel animalistic selfishness, although being in a certain sense the easier of paths, since destruction is really easy and, you know, building and making things, creating, sustaining is difficult, he will lose. And I think that in, in some very, very general zoomed out sense, that is the essence of life. And one of humanity's great gifts that through strength and effort, people as individuals and as groups can be greater than the sum of their parts if they can do the work and summon the strength and fight the hard battles that need to be fought without compromise. I've been observing this conflict through Tobra. Even though this boy has a remarkable quirk, he can't protect his loved ones. No, they end up hurting themselves to protect him. Shigaraki might join, man. He might join the cause, our cause. You can't see what drives this boy to keep going. He rages for others. He works as <laughs> the spirits inside of Deku the sake of those who can't are his biggest fans. That's damn right. This boy is so focused on saving others that he's unimaginable to you. You're damn right. <laughs> Deku coming through for them right now. <laughs> nice spirit chat. Wasn't stolen. He wasn't strong enough yet. You couldn't find enough power to take one for all. Do stay awake, Tomura. Your new body must be completed. To his credit, he also got nuked, among other things. Wow. Wow, this is the end of this conflict? What a crazy arc. Stay down. Nah. All things considered, I know a lot went down. I know a lot of casualties happened. That could have been so much worse. Oh yeah, <laughs> just Jigo Mantia. Jigo Machia. Jigo... Jigo Machias. It still could be bad. Very bad. You're gonna help me tear down this society built on false heroes. Penny for your thoughts. Dobby also is not a team player, ultimately. Where do these pros draw the line? If their purpose is to save people, did they not think Jean was a person? Honestly, I want to believe there's hope for all of them, as unlikely as that sounds. I'd like to ask them. Izuku, of course. And Ochako. If you meet Deku, there's a high chance of joining. Yeah, that's a good idea. Go talk to Deku and Ochako. You do a lot worse. Don't make innocent people suffer any more on account of our failures! These are not exactly the A-list of heroes, which is interesting. Taking on Giganto Machia. Later. You can't just jump off. She's on a kind of a spiritual quest right now to Rose get answers. Like this. It'll be way better if I get some answers. You don't have to do it right now. Something's speaking to her. You are not the only one who's upset. I liked twice. The League was the only place he felt like he belonged. And the boss probably wants us to stick together now that he's gone. Make sure that you come back to us. Bye. Very interesting. Very cohesive. They feel like great people when they're together. You know, if you just look at their interactions with each other, not, you know, the destruction. It'll be so interesting to see what happens with this crew. I, Dobby's the only one I feel like there's not a lot of hope for. Everyone else, you know, they've done a lot of wrong, but they have redeeming qualities. He already made his way here? Could Otako make him float? Is that beyond her ability right now? Oh, that scared the hell out of me. My poor husband's bedridden. I can't get him out of here by myself. You asked the right person. Follow me. Into the alleyway. I, I don't know about this. No, it's Toga. It's Toga. It's Toga. It's don't go in the alleyway. Never go into alleyways in Japan. Never go into a Japanese alleyway. Oh, you poor sweet girl. You kind-hearted soul. 
<laughs> yeah, you would think that would be unlikely. Oh, you're so nice. No. Oh, it's the sensor. I mean, thank God. Thank God. We don't need that indecency around here. Look, she wants to chat. You, I mean, you could do a lot of good. You could do something. Not what you thought you would do, but... Of course, I want to see Izuku real bad. He's so cool when he gets all bloody and beat up. Yeah, I guess Toga's method of talking is dangerous. What answer does she want? You pulled this whole stunt just to ask me that? Well, it's important. You think so? What if she tell that to the old lady whose blood you took? Oh yeah, I forgot that that's how that works. <laughs> Jeez. Maybe I'm being nuts. Maybe I'm out of my mind here. Because the show is doing its best to remind me how terrible they are. But at the same time, it's a show that makes really difficult choices and has not shied away from giving horrendous characters the spotlight to change. So I guess this is less of a prediction and more of just a wish. I would like it. I think it would be really satisfying if, to the best of their abilities, the heroes actually were able to do some good for these villains that, again, not justifying any of their actions, are just clearly lost and in pain. My reading of this scene is that this is a very Toga way of seeking answers from an internal conflict about what's going on. What I want to do is save as many people as I possibly can! And you're in my way! Here we go, Toga! So I'm gonna have to stop you right now! Huh. <laughs> I don't blame her for having that, that that reaction. Toga has been a threat, was a threat in this scene, continues to be a threat. And also she wasn't privy to that scene where Toga was asking herself those questions. So for her it's just a, a fight. But I wonder if there wasn't a way, and this might be explored in subsequent episodes, that she could have just immediately disarmed her if she had said the right things. I feel like so many things, so many thematic things are really coming to a head. So many questions and theories I had from early on in the series are being progressed towards, in my opinion. Again, I could be totally wrong about a lot of the stuff. I'm still kind of just speculating here, but I really feel like the themes of the show and the, the future that is gonna happen for these characters is a little more set based on what I'm seeing in the interactions between Deku and his spirit world and Shigaraki and his spirit world. I feel like I can see their ideological stances and how it connects to the actual world and you know ancient real universal battles in higher definition. And then also with the second part with Toga the question of is there any hope for these characters? I think the biggest question for me is is there any hope for Shigaraki? Which is another one of my hopes. I think that would be kind of the ultimate. If Deku can find a way to reach Shigaraki which honestly isn't mutually exclusive with defeating him it just means for there to be a kind of thematic and ideological resolution where Shigaraki sees the light. I don't think that's going to come from all for one, except maybe to realize and accept that he's weaker for how he's lived. That would be a really interesting and satisfying choice for me. It would be satisfying because I, I kind of agree with it. You know, I agree with the themes of the show. I think even if I wasn't able to articulate them, the fact that it's so powerful to me and I feel so inspired by the characters means there's something of objective-ish value there for me. Also in this episode, maybe I'm overreading it a little bit, but I feel like it was kind of a key line when the previous user of Black Whip, I think it was, was saying that anger is a powerful force, but it has to be controlled and led, led by the heart, I think he said. I think I said that for like a bunch of previous episodes, saying that Deku was sort of on the at a risk of going down a villainous path in that sense, not being in total control. It wasn't really explored beyond that. It's sort of unclear what was in his head as he did the counterattack after Bakugo got injured. That kind of got cut short by the whole spirit world thing. Nevertheless, I think it's, it's key because it fits into what I was saying before about the overall themes of the show about responsibility and self-mastery. This is, I would say, a huge episode in another way in the sense that this feels like the conclusion of this first part of season six, at least the, you know, the major conflict, the major danger of Shigaraki. And man, what a ride that was. That was insane. I actually think it was a great choice, even if it was somewhat predictable to have Shigaraki need to take a break, let's call it, just because there's been so much intensity. It would be as fun as it's been. Like, <laughs> me like the characters, I would kind of like to regroup a little bit. Though what might happen is, since this is the end of the first half, just in terms of episodes, we might get some of the stuff surrounding this battle for the remaining few episodes, and then the second half of season six might pick up with kind of the regroup and a new arc. Either way, I've heard there, there have been some complaints about the battle between Deku and Shigaraki. Having not read the manga at all, it didn't bother me because I didn't know what I was missing. I actually found it really satisfying. I think the twists were great. There's been some really just hair-raising, shocking moments like Aizawa getting hit with the bullet and then cutting off his own leg, followed by Bakugo's sacrifice. Deku showing up to fight Shigaraki is one of my favorite moments of the season so far, despite the risk, despite knowing how dangerous it was for him and the world, not being able to ignore his own conscience and his own heart and his own instincts in service of his friends. Very old school, beautiful Deku that I, I love and always have loved.